Hey everybody, it's Alex here with Game Watcher, and I'm here with Chris from the Master of Orion dev team at Wargaming. Uh, and you're here to talk to me a little bit about this reboot, essentially, of this esteemed series. So, when did you come onto the project? How did you get involved? And were you a fan of the original? Actually, I was a fan of the original, a big fan. Uh, I played it 20 years ago when I was in college, and uh, you know, I had a lot more time back then. Mm -hmm. I could easily uh, sit down with a, you know, a couple of pizzas and a, a case of soda and, and play all weekend. Um, don't quite have that much time now, but I still get to play a lot, uh, partly because I'm making it, right? Um, actually, so our CEO is a big fan of the game, and in 2013 when Atari was going out of business, that was one of the IPs that came up for auction. And he said, I have to have that, make sure you buy it, so it got bought. Uh, my first question to him, of course, was, okay, who's going to make this game, right? <laughs> I want to make it. Uh, but uh, we didn't have any, stu any bandwidth in our studios. Our studios are very busy with other games, so uh, this other studio from Buenos Aires, uh, NGD Studios, came to us with a prototype, and it was really beautiful, and we decided to make it, and uh, Victor, our CEO, said, okay, Chris, now you're on it, so get to it. So, so for the last two years, uh, we've been working hard on this game, and uh, now it's in early access, so ready to go. Awesome, and is that quite daunting, to be now entering the phase where people are playing it and it's on there on Steam for people to, to nab and stuff like that? Yeah, well, uh, of course. It's, it's exciting and, uh, you know, you make all these predictions but you don't really know how it's going to turn out until it, until it actually gets out, right? Uh, actually, we're exceeding our predictions, so it's very, really, very nice for us. Um, it gives us the opportunity in uh, early access, you know, it's, it's not really a beta test, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're actually um, gathering data, we're gathering feedback from the community and um, trying to, to make changes in the game. We have, we have QA teams that do bug testing, and, and you know, we do get a lot of bugs too, which is actually good because we can fix them before, before we launch. Uh, but the game is about 80% done, and the 20% the that's not done is, is probably 80% done itself, right? So we have to polish it and we have to balance and, and um, bring it up to speed before we can put the, these new features into the game. And in terms of responsiveness to feedback that comes from early access, so obviously, like you say, you're, you're a large part of the way to done, but say you get a large amount of feedback that fans really dislike a particular element or something, how flexible are you to, to make larger changes in the early access phase if it was asked of you? Well, it depends on the size of the element mm -hmm. and uh, how much longer we want to drag early access out. Again, it costs a certain amount per month uh, you know, for a development team and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, is it worth it? If it's worth it, sure. Right. Um, if it's not worth it, uh, maybe we see if we can implement uh, a simpler version or a partial version or improve the model we have so that it satisfies the needs of the player. Uh, we, do, uh, we do value the feedback. Um, we spent the first five days after we started early access gathering data um, from the players, both in terms of uh, the data that's on like, the server structure so that we can figure out uh, which races were the best, which strategies were the best. Um, which uh, victory conditions were won the most, and that way we can check for balance issues. Um, we also gathered uh, information from the forums, uh, both our not, not only our official forums, but the Steam forums, the GOG forums uh, in every region, forums on other gaming sites, everything. Uh, also our internal community feedback uh, from our developers and our consultants uh, from the original game and so forth. And we got this all in the first uh, like five days, and put this all together, and we made a list of the top like 400 items that we really <laughs> wanted to look at. And uh, the, the biggest three things uh, that we want to work on right now in, in EA1 uh, is uh, the artificial intelligence, making it smarter. We don't want it to cheat, because a lot of games do that, where they just let them see everything and give them extra money. And that's, that's not the same. We want them to act like a, a human, right? We want them to make decisions based on the information that they have. And um, so we're working on the AI to make it stronger, more challenging, um, and more give it more variety, mm -hmm. um, and make more racial specialization. So you can tell, you know, the Alkari are always trustworthy, or the Borathi are always aggressive, and that kind of thing. Um, and we also want to improve uh, tactical battles because the tactical battles uh, doesn't have enough player feedback right now, and uh, there's not enough player control over it. And we know that. And so we're uh, working to improve those based on the community feedback and also ship design. Uh, we're planning on rolling it out, uh, an improved version of the feature, but we really want to, um, right now, to, to do a lot of tweaking to get better uh, information so the player can make good decisions about what kind of weapons, what firing arcs, and what technologies to research. So for the older fans, because all that sounds, you know, taking on that feedback in that way is really fantastic. 
but for the older fans who you know potentially are at this stage a little bit concerned and they don't know you know as th they want to be with all beloved franchises uh, what were some of the bigger challenges and how did you address them you know how are you saying to the people at home who are skeptics and are a bit worried what have you done to you know help dissuade that concern right the, the question the biggest question we get is what have you done to my game <laughs> yeah. but each of us kind of remembers it differently each of us plays I mean some people are thinking about Master of Ryan 1 when they're talking about it some people are talking about Master of Ryan 2 some people are even thinking about Master of Ryan 3 when they're saying uh, not too many <laughs> so they're like well you know why did you make these decisions well th this game isn't just for us the hardcore players from 20 years ago it's not even for us today with our with our families and, and jobs and no time to play right uh, that it should be uh, easier to understand and get into. Um, it's for this whole new generation. We want our kids to play it the same way we played it and to feel the same way about it, to have that feeling of, I want to play one more turn, I want to finish this technology, or I want to invade this system, you know, or I want to complete some structure. Th there's always something to be done in the game, always interesting decision to be made. And that's the real the real flavor of Master of Orion. The, the, the kind of the spice is you know, the, the ten original races and the, the uh, snarky, humorous GNN robots and those kinds of things, uh, and, you know, that, that we remember also from the, from the original game. But there are always things that we don't want to remember from the original game, which is like the, the MIDI music. Okay, the music was good for the time, and we have the original composer on it. He, he made an orchestral score out of that original music, so it sounds great, but it doesn't sound like the old music because it's... it's you know, 7.1 Dolby, you know, it's great. Yeah, and nobody's rocking the old Yamaha yeah. Sound Blaster, you know. <laughs> right. Sound Blaster 16, yeah, yeah. I remember that yeah. well. So, uh, you know, it, we're not 256 colors anymore. You know, it's a, we're 3D with animations and rendering and all these things. So bringing the, the technology up brought a lot of additional opportunities for us to, to make the game uh, appeal to a wider audience than the old ones. And the genre itself is expanding. I mean, there's several games coming out this year in this genre. And after so, such a long gap of nothing, this is really great. It's really refreshing to see this because I think we can all be successful in this space by some of us being uh, more focused on broadening the market, some of us being more focused on satisfying uh, the people who, who like to just juggle spreadsheets. Uh, and some of us saying, you know, okay, I want a thousand hour game with a million systems. Okay, that's fine. Somebody will make that. Um, yeah. That's cool. And I'm curious about, you mentioned obviously um, Victor, your CEO, obviously enough of a fan that he was like, I need to buy this series. Um, how active was he in when you were early on and you were deciding how to make it the same and how to make it different? Was he quite a vocal fan <laughs> slash boss? Yes, very much so. In fact, uh, at the beginning, uh, this is kind of a new thing. So before, you know, we're famous for World of Tanks, World of Warships, World of Warplanes, you know, free-to-play online action yeah. games. For 15 years before that, we made turn-based and real-time strategy yeah. games. Most people don't realize that. And this is our DNA, our, this is our, the core of our blood, right? So this is... For wargaming, it's not something new, but for the team that is now wargaming, it, a lot of this team wasn't around you know, when we made those games. So, it, not self-publishing either. Like, I think, I remember, was it Order of War, you yeah, guys? Yeah, yeah. And that, that was Square Enix here, I remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. That was, that, and that was, the, that was actually the last strategy game that we made before World of Tanks. Yeah. And um, that was actually when I started with the company, so ah. seven years ago. And uh, we've grown since then, you know, from 65 employees to uh, over 4,000 in 16 countries and so forth. So um, this, for us, is a new experience, not only because um, we're big, right? It's not like a small, we're not we're shopping around for a publisher, we're a publisher shopping around for a studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not just publishing it ourselves, but we're going on Steam and GOG. Mm. We're not just putting it out retail, but we're pulling it out, putting it out in early access. And mm. all these things uh, that, that are really new and interesting for us. We're, we're really enjoying doing these things. So at first, Victor was very, uh, okay, this game has to meet my standards for gameplay and fun and, and everything else, but we also have to have the process of, of you know, new, doing all these new things within the company. And so he was, he was really hands-on um, until he saw we were taking care of it, doing a good job, and then he's like, okay, just make sure that the game is updated on my laptop so I can play it. <laughs> yeah. And so that's it. Now, now he's just playing it. It's good to have a boss who is also a fan and not just a businessman, sure you know what I mean? So, uh, just to wrap up, I guess, for the, the, the other half of the audience, the people who have never touched 
a Master of Orion game before, you know. What do you say to those people? What do you want them to take away from this game? What do you say to them to, to try to draw them in to try it out? So it's a very uh, appealing game. This is one of the... We changed the interface a lot, obviously, to make it uh, simpler, more accessible. There's still a ton of information under the hood, uh, you know, hundreds of technologies and all the different diplomacy aspects and things like that. But it doesn't. It shouldn't be complex for a new player. So we've automated it as much as possible, and then you can turn off that automation and do it by hand once you're confident with it. Um, we have all of the things to help bring them into the story. Like back then, you know, the story was all in your head because. The, the, the art and the audio and things were yeah. very primitive technologically. Yeah. Now we have this AAA voice talent. We have 3D animations. We have, you know, 3D ship models and giant space battles. Um, all those things like turning 3D worlds with atmospheres and, and space stations flying around them and things. Um, this brings them into the immersion of the game. The story, they can learn to appreciate the story of Master of Orion as we did 20 years ago. Um, but this isn't going to be, you know, this isn't your father's game. This is this is a new game that's, that's approachable to a new player, and we're hoping that they will also find the fun in it and, and spend you know tens and hundreds sometimes of hours playing this game, which is different every time you play. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Good luck with the rest of the early access period, ma'am. Thank you for it, having me. It's looking fantastic. I, I I've been lucky enough to, to have a little bit of access prior to this event, and. I'm really enjoying it. I, I'm, an, I'm an old school strategy fan myself. Played the originals, one and two a lot, three not so much. Um, and I'm really excited to see how the final, final product turns out. So thanks a lot. So until next time, guys, see ya.